I am recording this video right now because this might be my last video and before I die I want all of you to know the reason of my death I have been unjustifiably apprehended charged and prosecuted in the most unfair ludicrous manner in Albania now I'm being held against my own will my passport has been impounded I cannot get out of Albania by the police how did it all happen as you guys know if you follow my videos I've been traveling the world and I've been to Brazil I've been to the amazing jungle I've been to the outback Australia I've been to the Thai jungle and everything I have a fishing knife which was given to me by my Australian friends in Boomtown up back, I mean one arm point. And then my Brazilian friend gave me the jungle knife. They laughed at me initially when I was using the axe, the tomahawk axe to chop the branches. And they laughed at me and they said, huh, how can you chop those branches in uh, Brazil? They are so hard. You need a real jungle knife. So they presented it to me. The knife was very, very, very helpful to me because it helped me, the back part of the knife helped me to start the fire with the magnesium. I have a magnesium, you know, flare and I start a fire. I, I you know, and, and there's a compass and then there's also a first aid kit. That knife saved my life in Rio Negro. I was drowning and I managed to put a knife inside the mud, the clay and I held onto it while I waited for someone to rescue me from the river. So, that knife meant a lot to me. I did not draw it out. I did not carry it with me around. I have always, I've always kept those two knives wrapped up, really wrapped up tightly in a plastic bag and scotch tape. And then I put it in my 23 kilogram suitcase, the big one. Let me show it to you. Oh, I don't have it with me right now. But it's in a big, huge 23 kilogram suitcase, which I stuffed it inside, zip it up, double locked it. I double locked it with a digital lock and also a padlock, okay? And I've been traveling around for the last two years with this knife. I've also been to Albania last year in 2019. I came in, I went through the screen, the x-ray screen. They saw the knife and they said, no problem, no problem. And then when I came up from Albania three months later, I wasn't stopped. I went to Turkey from there, Turkey saw it. They asked me to check it. They wanted to check it out physically. I took it out for them. They saw it. They registered my, my passport and they let me go. I went to Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and I asked the uh, TSA. I said, look, I don't have a TSA lock. Mine is just a normal padlock. And I have two knives inside there. I know the US is pretty strict about this. And I asked them, do you want me to take it out and show it to you? They said, no, nah, no problem. You're checking into the cargo session. Now, I have followed all the international carriers protocol the tsa protocols okay do you remember what they say no sharp objects like scissors cutters knives are supposed to be brought on board the plane they have to be kept in the luggage checked in into the cargo and this is exactly what i did i checked i wrapped them up i checked in into the bag, I checked the bag into the cargo. Now, just n last week, on the, I think it was on the 14th of, Ju of June, I was going to Brazil. I was leaving Brazil. Now, I came to Australia with those two knives. If they wanted to apprehend me then, they should have apprehended me then because I brought them into Albanian soil, right? That's what the very mean and vicious police, they said that. They, they didn't stop me, okay? They said, no problem, no problem. And then when I'm leaving for, our, for, for Brazil, I've already checked in my bag. I got my air ticket. I checked in my bag. It was leaving for the cargo. I was at the immigration. Do you know how far apart that is? Do you know how far I am with, from the, those knives? Those knives were in the 23 kilogram bag on its way to the cargo. I'm on my way to the immigration. In exactly one hour, I will be in Istanbul transiting in Istanbul to Brazil. You know what they did to me? Do you know what this crazy, idiotic people in the airport did to me? 
they intercom me, passenger Eric Ong, please report to the belt something. The re return to the cargo cargo there. So from the immigration, I got to return back there. I walk all the way back there. They asked me to open my bags. I have to, they, in, they vehemently demanded I open my bag. So I opened my two locks. First was my pet lock and my digital lock. And then they, 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 they insisted to see the knives. So I opened up, the knife was still wrapped up. They tore the plastic bag, took out the knives, inspected it, put it in my hands, and then they charged me under section 279 for manufacture, selling, and possession of dangerous of co-weapon, dangerous weapon. How ridiculous and ludicrous and preposterous this is. This is so unjustifiable. This is ridiculous. They took out the knives, put it in my hands, and then charged me for possession. I was already at the immigration. The knives were kept in the back. Locked, double locked. And they framed me up. They framed me up and they put this ridiculous charge for a crime I did not commit. And then you know what? They just want the, 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 the crazy prosecutor. She was so mean. She demanded that I be imprisoned for this charge. In court, I was arrested by the police. I was brought into the lockup for three days. Okay, they reached my arm, pulled my arm, dragged my arm, and then threw me inside the cell. Now I cannot go anywhere, and I'm my 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 money is running low, as you know, and uh, I don't know what else to do. So. I don't think they're letting me off, lead me off anytime soon. They are very mean, they are very vicious, and I can warn all of you, do not come to Albania, because this is not a democratic country. They have no human rights here. They can pump any charge onto you, they can create any type of ludicrous charge and they make it stick on you. Just be careful. So, if you don't hear from me anymore, if there's no more videos on this, means I am dead. And I wish all of you the best. This is so unfair. The charge is so unjustifiable. They took out the knife and put it in my hands and then say that I possess the knife. The knife was checked in. I never at any time when I was in Albania take out the knife. The knife has all along been inside the bag. And when, when I went shopping, when I went anywhere up the mountains, the knife was at the hotel. They were in the lockup in the hotel. I never at any time take it out. I had no reason to take it out because I'm in society. The knives are only for the jungle and for fishing in the jungle, in the outback Australia. I'm following the TSA protocols, the, 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 the international aircraft guidelines. All sharp objects like cutters, scissors, knives are not allowed to be checked, are not allowed to be brought on board the plane. They have to be checked in the baggage. They have to be baggage checked in. And this is what I did. What did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. And when the baggage was in the cargo area, going to the cargo area, I was already at the immigration. You know how far apart that is? That is so far apart. I never had any weapons. That is not a weapon. I need the knife because I need the knife to start the fire in the forest. And that knife, the jungle knife, they call it military knife. You know, it's whatever, however you want to call it. Military knife, jungle knife, hunting knife, whatever you call it. But that knife has a, at the heel of it, you know, they have a sharp little thing. Then you can, you can rub it against the wood and it cause a spark. And when the spark hit the magnesium ash, it creates a fire. That's how I keep myself warm in the night. And then the hilt of it, then the blade of it is help to chop the firewood. And this helps me, okay, to take down the small little wild pigs. Then I can roast them, I can eat them. And then the fishing knife is for scaling the fish. They wouldn't listen. These idiots here wouldn't listen. They only hear what they want to hear. The rest, they block it out. They see only what they want to see. They don't see the whole picture. And now my life is gone.
They arrested me. They threw me into the lockup for three days. They, 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 they bent my arm all the way out and they threw me inside the cell. They dragged me into the cell. Anyway, I can tell you I've traveled the entire world, but this is the worst country I've been to which there is no law. They can do anything to you and there's nothing you can do about this. My advice to you, stay the hell away from this place. If anybody can help me after watching this video, I mean Albania, please, please help me. Get the United Nations, the Human Rights Movement or whatever it is, please help me. Send this video. Please. Thank you. Bye-bye.